Corwell, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I want to support Labor's Fair Work Amendment protecting take-home bill pay uh, 2017, which was tabled by the Leader of the Opposition on Monday, and a bill that seeks to amend the Fair Work Act as to stop from taking into effect the decision by the Fair Work Commission to cut penalty rates. This bill will ensure that modern awards cannot be varied to reduce the take-home pay of an employee. The decision to cut penalty rates will affect the hospitality, retail and fast food industries and is expected to affect some 700,000 Australians, a large number of them, Deputy Speaker, in my electorate of Cornwall. These are some of the most vulnerable workers. Many are young people, mostly students, working to support their education and, of course, women who are juggling family and work. These workers are vulnerable because necessity requires them to take whatever job they can in a job market where mass casualisation and underemployment has already given the employers the upper hand to play the game in their favour. Cost of living has risen, Deputy Speaker. Wage growth is at a historic low. Life is really tough for the lowest paid workers. So how can the Turnbull government remain so unmoved and so unwilling to support them? Instead, my constituents are being shafted for company tax cuts to corporations that, quite frankly, are not short of a quid. Deputy Speaker, there is dignity in work, and that dignity extends to people being paid a fair wage for a fair day's work, in particular when that labour is given on Sundays. Penalty rates and overtime are iconic features of Australian wages. In fact, an entire post-war generation of migrants who built this country worked shift work and weekends in order to get ahead, save, become self-sufficient and build their lives in Australia. In that same way, newly arrived migrants today in my electorate especially continue to rely on penalty rates as a way of helping them get ahead. Australian workers, Deputy Speaker, fought the battle for their pain working conditions many times over, and the Australian Labor Party and the union movement have stood alongside them always and will continue to do so. If this government really believes that the abolition of penalty rates will lead to more jobs, then my constituents had better start looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow because it doesn't necessarily follow that business will create more jobs once penalty rates are cut, despite what the Turnbull government and the Business Council says. There are too many examples of exploitation and underpayment scams by employers, 7-Eleven, Domino's and Caltex, to name a few, in order for Australian workers to place their faith in employers using the penalty rate cuts to create more jobs. We know that it's an employer's market, not an employee's market. The race to the bottom on wages happens because there will always be someone else's vulnerability and desperation to take advantage of and exploit. This exploitation proves that existing laws are not tough enough, says Alan Fells, chair of the Migrant Workers Task Force. So my constituents have every right to be afraid, very afraid about their prospects of a fair go and opportunity. So whilst this government is still in place, I, I call on the government to drop the its one-sided support of business and instead and walk in the shoes of some of our lowest paid workers.